We have generally maintained and upheld our democratic freedoms. We have had relatively free and fair elections. We have remained an independent democratic nation for over 65 years and this is a significant achievement that we should be proud of. However, endemic corruption which now permeates all aspects of our society within our legislature, executive and judiciary is continuing the spread of a disease that blights our nation and our future development. Our politicians are losing respect. There is a trust deficit. Our democracy is therefore more impressive in form than substance. Coupled with the increasing level of criminality in Indian society, governance needs to improve to stem and reverse these behaviours and their eventual dire consequences. There are five changes that we must make. Firstly, we need a much stronger central leadership that can create, define and share a vision for the nation. Secondly, we must remove the corrupt individuals and those that do not meet the standards of probity required in each of the roles of the three foundation pillars of our democracy, the executive, the judiciary and the legislature. We need clarity and transparency of who is accountable and responsible within the leadership, management and administration of our government initiatives. We need a bottom-up mechanism for change, for citizens and communities to take accountabilities. Panchayats and other entities need to begin to take legal and financial answerability and liability for their decisions and their actions. Finally, we need to simplify and reduce the human interaction and the interference within our bureaucracy. We need to align the executive, legislature and judiciary towards a common vision and goals for the nation and for them all to work together to that end. We need to ensure professional project management for the creation, analysis, assessment and implementation of all government initiatives. We'd have the number of criminal and other pending cases, number of convictions for those holding public office, including the civil service and the panchayats,